Hi, I'm Pastor Jerry Jenkins, Addiction Free in Christ, a ministry of miracles, a ministry without walls and boundaries. It's actually a threefold ministry. First of all, helping people receive salvation through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Secondly, helping people receive deliverance from the slavery of addiction. And thirdly, helping people receive healing in their spirit, mind, soul, and body. And this is the word for the week. The word for this week is Bible. B-I-B-L-E. That's the book for me. Yes, the Bible. Now, many people have one of these at home. In fact, a lot of them you'll find on a desk somewhere or on a table, and some of them will be have real heavy dust on them. That means they haven't been open for a while. Other ones look like this one. They're bright and shiny because they've been used every day. Well, what is the Bible? <laughs> Most people would tell you that this is a book. But this Bible is much more than a book. So that's what we're going to be looking at for a few minutes today. The Bible is much more than a book. The Bible is actually the most powerful thing in the universe. Boy, that's exciting, isn't it? Well, it actually says that. So let's look at what it says about the Bible. We're going to look at it, and uh, let's see, where will we find that? I think Hebrews 4, 12, and 13, if you want to turn there. It says this, that the Bible is actually living. It's alive. The most powerful thing in the universe. It says, for the Bible, for the Word of God, actually, for the Word of God is living. It's powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the division of the soul and the spirit, and a joint in the marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And there's no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to him who we must give an account. So this book is living. This thing's actually alive. It's what it says. It's powerful. It's the most powerful thing in the universe. Sharper than a two-edged sword. Whoa, that's pretty powerful. Let's take a look at what else it says about it. Okay, in the Gospel of John, the very first chapter, it tells us who the Bible is. I didn't say what the Bible is. I said who the Bible is. Let's look at it. John 1, 1 through 5. Turn with me if you'd like. It says this in verse 1. In the beginning was the Word. That's what this is. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. Well, it's with God, and it is God. This is God. Well, let's see what else it says. He was in the beginning with God. We're talking about person now. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him we have life. And the life was the light of the men. And the light shineth in the darkness. And the darkness did not comprehend it. So this thing was in the beginning with God. And it says it was God. And it says that he, that man person, was in the beginning with God. Well, we need to go look and see who this he is. John, the first chapter, verse 2 told us he was in the beginning with God. Verse 14 tells us who he was. And the word, that's this, became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory has the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. That just told me that this book here, the word became flesh, this book is actually Jesus Christ. What it says, what it says right here in the book, that this is Jesus Christ. 
Let's go on and see what else it says. Oh, Colossians, the first chapter, verse 13 through 18. If you want to turn there, if he meant to do that, clarifies that he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of his son, of his love. That's Jesus Christ. I want to be talking about he, him, and whom we have redemption through his blood for the forgiveness of sins. That's Jesus Christ only. It goes on to say, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him, all things were created that are in heaven, that are on the earth, visible, invisible, whether thrones, dominions, principalities, or powers, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning of the firstborn from dead, from the dead. That in all things may have preeminence. That he has preeminence over all things. So this book right here is actually Jesus Christ. In fact, let's look a little bit deeper about that. Okay. It says right here, the Bible is Jesus Christ himself, which tells that there is only one way to salvation, deliverance and healing. And that is when we surrender our life to Jesus Christ, who is the living word of God right here. That's why the Bible tells us to study to show ourselves approved. It doesn't say read to show yourself approved. It says, when you're reading this thing, when you're studying it, what's it saying to you? A lot of times, read this thing backward and forward, hundreds and hundreds of times. And once in a while, I'll be reading it and I'll, Julie, Julie, come here, Julie. And Julie will come here, what do you want, Jerry? Look here, I've read this a hundred times, honey. Look what this says. And I'll be reading a scripture that I know by heart. And all of a sudden, I will see where it says something. For instance, I looked at it the other day and it said, Abide in me and I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit of, its, of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. Somewhere I saw where it said, Oh, right here. Let me read this to you. It says, Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes it away. I never thought about that before. Once we accept Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, <clears throat> he's the vine and we're the branches. And we're supposed to go bear fruit, he said. Every branch that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Well, that tells me I better keep bearing fruit. I never saw that before. I've read it a million times, but... As you study the Bible, these things that you know, you can just sit down and almost quote it. And sometimes something like that will jump off the page and say, wait a minute, stop. What's this saying? Every branch that does not bear fruit, he takes it away. So that tells me as Christians, we need to be bearing fruit. Let's go on and look at something else that the Bible tells us about study to show ourselves approved. Jesus was speaking. Now, I want you to think about this for a minute. This is powerful. In John 8, 31 and 32, he said, If you abide in my word, you're my disciples indeed, and you'll know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. I was a serious alcoholic at one time in my life. I could not stop. But when I surrendered my life to Jesus Christ, totally surrendered to him, he made me free. If you abide in my words, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It's not by some program. 
12 steps, 10 steps, 11 steps, one step, no steps. When you surrender your life to Jesus Christ, he sets you free. He actually makes you free. Now, let me share something else with you about this. You know, Julie and I abide in the house. That means we were in it this morning. We're going to be in it tonight. We sleep in it. We eat, drink, and sleep in it. So we abide in it. That means we live in it. Well, if you abide in my word, that's the Bible, that means if I live in it, I'm his disciple. I'm his follower. And then I'm going to know the truth. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I'm going to know him personally. And then he is going to make me free. Not some program. Not some theory of man. But Jesus Christ himself, the word of God, is what's going to make me free. It's what did make me free. So I want you to start thinking about that. We abide in his word, we're his disciple indeed, and we'll know the truth, and the truth will make us free. When we do this, we must realize that we have the most powerful thing in the universe in our hand, Jesus Christ. Now, eh, let me tell you something exciting. There's a lot of exciting, exciting things going on out there right now. There's many uh, leaders of countries that are threatening to cause war and all this and that, and we have a new uh, government right now here in America. Everything's being changed. We're going through a lot of different things. We're wondering, how are we going to do this? How are we going to do that? What's going to happen here? What's going to happen there? All I need is this. <laughs> you know why? Let me share with you what it says about itself. Jesus is talking, Matthew twenty-eight eighteen, And he says, all authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. Now listen to that. All authority, not some authority, not some little bit of authority, but all authority has been given to Jesus Christ in heaven and here on this earth. No matter who is leading the government, no matter where they're rioting, no matter what they're burning down, even if it's American flag, you, in this right here, you have all authority over heaven and earth. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? So it doesn't, they can threaten you with anything they want to threaten you with. Just as long as you have this, you have nothing to worry about because you have all authority over heaven and earth. So I encourage you today, to do like I'm going to do every day and do every day. I pick this up every day. And when I, once in a while, I have to admit it, I hate to, but once in a while I actually turn on the news. <laughs> and boy, if that don't give you nightmares, nothing will. But even after watching that news and thinking, what on earth is going to go on? I remember one thing. I got all authority in heaven and earth, right here in my hand. And I have nothing to worry about. Jesus said he'd never leave you or forsake you. And he'll never leave you or forsake you. So no matter what's going on, no matter what you hear on the news that they're going to do tomorrow, just remember, if you got this, and if you're in it every day, you don't have to worry, because Jesus got all authority over heaven and earth. I want to thank you for listening today. I hope this has ministered to you. I'd like to have you call us and tell us if you're listening to these programs. And I'd like to also have encourage you to uh, get on our YouTube channel. In fact, I'd like to have you hook up for that and, and uh, sign up for our YouTube channel so you can get all these programs. Thank you for listening again. God bless you. Remember, all authority has been given to Jesus Christ in heaven and earth. And if you or in his word every day, he gives you all authority over everything that can come against you. God bless you and thank you for listening. Look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye.